All right, so check it out. This weekend was all about Easter. It was all about the death, burial, resurrection, Easter weekend. Good Friday leading up to Sunday. Jesus dying in the, in the grave for our sins, rising on Sunday, resurrection power, meaning he is now opened up the, the, the bridge. He's given us a bridge to get back to heaven because of what he did for us on the cross. Amen. Now, if you, you believe in Jesus, you believe you're Christian, these are the fundamentals of our faith. It's the bottom line. These are the absolutes you need to know. That Jesus died for your sins, but also he rose from the grave. You see, so many of Christians even don't understand the resurrection power of Jesus. You know, because I, I had this radical conversion and it was in prison. It was like me not reading the Bible my whole life. 32 years old, getting arrested. Some of you know my story. Some of you see my, my movie, documentary, read my book. But some of you might not. And you know what? I, had, I started off as a kid with big dreams like these right here. And you know what? All I wanted to be was the best skateboarder in the world. And you know what? I was like, it was good intentions. It was, it was this, you know, kid that just wanted to aspire to, to be somebody. But how many of you know that as you grow up, you become 11, 12, 13, peer pressure starts to come. I don't know about you, but I idolized guys like Jay Adams, Tony Alba, right? These are the guys that mentored me, that I looked up to. And these are the guys that smoked weed, drank beer, dropped out of school, like did all these crazy things and I thought, I'm gonna be just like them. And you know what happened? I became just like them. Why? Because I idolized them. And I want and I thought that's what you know you needed me to be cool. But you know what? First I started with big dreams just to be the best in the world. I wanted to be like Bruce Lee. I wanted to beat everyone up and I wanted to do it real funny. I wanted to clown people like wow, right? And then I got introduced to skateboarding and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this on a skateboard. I'm gonna just kill everybody and, and, and it was this little kid dream but as I got older I had to fit in I had to do things that made me look cool and you know what I felt cool and you know what I got to this place where I was you know winning contest and then by the time I was 16 I started winning the contest I started hitting my mark of my goal being the best in the world Inventing maneuvers like the Rocket Air, the Christ Air, you know, starting my own company, Hasoy Skateboards, at 17 years old. Yeah. These are the things that I aspired for. But along the way, I started smoking weed at 10 years old. Started doing acid at 12, cocaine at 14 years old, to the point where it was like, I would do it all day, all night, to the point where I would show up at a contest, staying up all night, and I would get third place, and, and I'd be like, how? did these guys win thinking oh I was invincible that you know what I, I should win anyway because you know I thought I was so naturally gifted I could stay up all night and win the contest but you know what it wasn't working for me and I had a father that was like man you need to stay on your game and so what did I do I quit doing cocaine but I said to myself I'm not gonna do drugs anymore I'm just gonna smoke weed and drink beer how many of you said that Come on, I know, I know you say that. And you know what? It is better than doing heroin. It is better than doing crystal meth like I did every single day for eight years of my life. Staying up for four days at a time. Running around the streets. Basically chasing the bag. Literally thinking, you know what, man, I'm gonna make a comeback. I'm gonna quit one day. I'm gonna quit one day. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna change my life. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna skate hard again but how many of you know that tomorrow 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 it just keeps happening and you know what you're hanging out with the same people that are still doing the same thing and you know what what are you gonna do you're gonna start doing the same thing if you don't change the circles you hang out with because you gotta have new goals you gotta set new 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 ways of life and for me there was no other life it was the cool way or no way for me and I was gonna either, I was gonna die being cool, right? A lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. Because you know what? It's like, I'd rather be cool than to be responsible. 
and to be a leader, to be a role model, to be somebody that these kids can look up to and say, you know what, I've, I've been, been taught by him. His life has taught me how to live my life. You see, I never thought like that. I thought I'm just going to inspire people to skate rad and blast tri stairs and you know what? But here I was smoking weed, doing crazy things, no, not knowing that they were going to want to do that too, like I wanted to do what my idols did. And so here I am doing all this stuff, now I'm running the streets and I'm like, I'll quit tomorrow, 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 and then I get arrested. I get arrested, they're telling me I'm going to do 10 years. Get this, I've never been to church before, right? My name's Christian, my nickname was Christ. I invented the Christ there. Nobody I knew invited me to go to church. Nobody even prayed before they ate. I mean, I traveled the world and I didn't know anybody. And if they did, they didn't share it with me. And so for me, it was like, oh, God's good. Drugs are good. I'm good. You know, partying's good. If you're a good person, you'll probably go to heaven. That's my thought. You know, I was like, you know what, Bruce Lee's into Taoism, I'm going to study that, I'm going to study Buddha. You know what, I was just like, okay, nothingness is like the form of like bliss. And, you know, I was that kid searching for something uh, that was true. And I couldn't find it. In, in my highest days of making millions of dollars, world champion, traveling the world, having anything I wanted, there was something missing in my heart because I was trying to find something that would make me feel satisfied. And all the money, all the trophies, all the girls, all the party, all the pictures in the magazines, all the covers, it just, it, it, you know what I say? It was like my life was like a bucket and it was full of holes. I just kept putting that in and it would drain out. I put that in and it would drain out. I put that in and it would drain out. And, and it was like, I was searching for what I call love. You know, we're all searching for love, and I, I, I always say, you know what, I was searching for love in all the wrong places. And you know, it was finally to this point where I was like, if the good things ain't making me happy and satisfying me, I'm gonna do the bad things. So many people do that because they're trying to soul search, right? How many of you have been there? I'm gonna soul search and take ass. I'm gonna soul search and, and get crazy. I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to, you know, find myself. And it, that was me. And to the point where I ended up carrying a bunch of drugs on an airplane, getting arrested. And my girlfriend, right before that, she said, Christian, I'm quitting drugs and I'm going to church. I was like, cool, I'll go. I went with her, nothing. I went to a Calvary Chapel in Placentia. And I did drugs all the way there, did drugs all the way home. I was like, cool. I thought it was like this country club kind of thing. Just like, you know, any type of like, you know, I guess group of people that want to do good things. I didn't know that there was there was spiritual life there. That there was there was a, a God that loved me there. I didn't even really care because nobody explained it to me. Nobody told me that God God loves you, Christian. And I'm going. Nothing happened. She ends up. What happens? Good, bad, bad morals, corrupt, good character. I got her back into using drugs. I said, I'm going to Hawaii. She said, I don't want to go home. I'll go with you. Went to Hawaii. I got arrested. Check this out. I make my first phone call from prison. And you know what? I'm, I, I get there. I'm on the news. I get in there. They're like, what's up, Christian? What's happening? Dude, I had your court when I was a kid. I was like, sick. What are you here for? He's like, I'm here for murder. I'm like, sweet, dude, 21 years old. And I'm sitting here going, what am I doing here? Like, why am I in this tank right now? And then they're like, so what's up, bro? I'm like, so what are you, how long are you gonna have to be here? He goes, I'm doing a 140 years double life sentence. And I was like, oh, how do you react to that? I was like, sick, right? Like, like oh, I mean, I go, how much time am I looking at? He goes, 10 years, bro. He goes, gravy. Walk in the park, bro. You'll be out of jail in no time. I was like, compared to 140 years, he was right. But to me, it was a life sentence. I was 32 years old. They're telling me 10 years of my life. I was like, I'm not going to make it. My knees started shaking. I was like, 
Because when I got arrested, they're like, Christian, you need to turn somebody in. You need to do all this stuff or else you're going to do the whole 10 years. I was like, you're crazy. You know, I'm in Hawaii, so I'm like, okay, easy, Dano. Anybody watch Hawaii Five-0? Yeah. Right. I'm like, easy, Dano. And, and I thought they were kidding, but they were telling me the truth. And I get there, and they're like, yeah, no problem. And I'm making my first phone call. Now I'm trying not to cry on the phone, right? All these killers around me, you know what I mean? I'm like, babe, I don't think I'm going to make it through this. And she's like, you know what? I love you. We just got to trust in God. And I was like, God? I was like, babe, I need, an, I need a lawyer. I need an attorney. I was like, I need bail. And she's like, she's like, no, God's going to help us. And I was like, Think about this. My name's Christian. My nickname Christ. I invented the Christ there. I went to church for the first time in my life. Right before I got there, I was like, what in the world is happening? I'm looking at 10 years. God, if you're real, I need your help. Please. And the Bible says if you search for God with your whole heart, you'll find him. And I was sitting there going, I'll never do drugs again. I'll speak to kids again. I'll come to Arizona. I'll go to skate parks. I'll tell them my story. I was like, whatever it is, I'll do it for you. Just get me bail, right? I'm like making a deal with God, right? Anybody been there? Trying to make a vow? And I was sitting there. And what happened? I went to court. At first, I opened up the Bible. It was like the scales fell off my eyes. I realized God had a plan for my life, that I was created for a reason, that I wasn't by accident, that it was my choices that got me to where I was at. It was going to be my choices that got me out of where I was at. It was going to be my choices. And I, and I just knew it. And that night, I ripped through the Bible. It was kings. And then, sure enough, I go... They say, danger to the community, threat to society, no bail. And I was like, what happened, God? I said, God, didn't we make a deal? But in my heart, I knew that I was sincere. And I spent five years in prison. But get this, I spent five years in prison, a free man, the first time in my whole life. Think about this. I finally had peace, I finally had joy, I finally had that thing I was searching for, that love that, that God, God says, you know what, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. When I read that, it was like, God so loved the world, he loved Christian, that he gave his only son, that if I believe in him, I will, will not perish but have eternal life. It was like the weight of like me trying to prove to everybody I'm cool, trying to live this life of like identity crisis trying to fit in was gone and i knew god created me special for for who i am and it was like for the first time in my life i had contentment i had peace i had love i had joy and it was like and i'm behind bars think about it i'm behind bars everybody's like why are you so happy i was like walking to chow i don't know if you guys been there but walk into chow, hands in front, can't, you know, I'm like this. This is sick. I'm, I'm going to heaven. You know what I mean? I was like, dang, I'm going to heaven. Woo, man, Jesus, Easter is, is about the resurrection. It's about me knowing that he died for my, and I was like, this is insane. I was like, I can't wait to tell all my friends when I get out. I can't wait to study the scripture, to be able to explain it to people who ask whether they're young, whether they're old. I was like, this is incredible. And I'm sitting there for the first time in my life full the weight of the world it was like you know the hurt the pain the shame and the guilt for what i did to my parents my son friends it washed off my shoulders for the first time in my life and i was like finally forgiven i accepted god's forgiveness he forgave me and the bible says in second corinthians 5 17 it says that all those who are in christ are a new creation Old things have passed away. People, all things have become new. And I, I went like this. You mean I'm a brand new? I don't have to be guilty and, and ashamed of what I did. And God's like, no, I've forgiven you, Christian. Now go and, and, and sin no more, basically, is what he's saying. But we, we all know that we're not perfect. But in his grace, we know that we can get better. You see, I'm better today than I was yesterday. I've been pastoring for 10 years. 
And you know what? I'm still working on it. I'm still getting better. I'm still working on those areas where I'm slacking in. And you know what? We're a work in progress. We're under construction to with the Lord. And I tell you, but it all started, the peace, the joy, everything, the purpose, the, the living, living a life with passion started. My journey started when I opened up my heart and gave my life to Jesus. And it was two weeks into my prison sentence. And it was on the phone from county jail. And I said it with my wife. I'm still married to that woman. She's stuck with me. We now have two beautiful children. We've gone through thick and thin, but you know what? We have fought the good fight of faith. We're gonna go on our 15 year anniversary, amen? Come on. Hey, that's a testament right there. Anybody who's married know what I'm talking about. But there came a point where I had to allow God in. The Bible says that he stands at the door of your heart and he knocks. You see, God's not going to kick the door of your heart and force you to love him back. You see, love was expressed on the cross when he died for us. That when he died for us, he said, yeah, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. That was the biggest, most expression of love in this whole universe was that. And we celebrated it yesterday. And when I got that, I said, I am in. I'm 100% in. This is me. I want that. And it, it was just like a simple prayer that I prayed. And it was like, the, I tell you, it was the most incredible moment of my life. And I still remember it like it was yesterday. And I want to pray with you guys. Because that's when the journey starts. You see, eternal life starts there when you open up your heart. He says, stands at the door of your heart. God is knocking on your heart, my friend. And he says, if you'll allow him to come in, he'll dine with you, he'll sup with you, the Bible says. He'll be part of your life is basically what that means. But you need to open up that door. That's why we have free will. See, what would it be if I forced you to love me? It wouldn't be true love. It wouldn't be genuine love. And that's what God wants from us. He wants genuine love back. That's why I just adore God. I love God. My, my relationship with God, my obedience to God, and how I live my life, why I can stay sober 16 and a half years, not one touch of drugs since that day, is because I love Him and I know He loves me. Bottom line. And the Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 50, He says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And so I went like this. So if I obey you, it's a form of me showing you that I love you. So see, I don't try to impress people anymore. My relationship with God and what I do and what I don't do is basically between me and Him. And it says that if I do that, it'll, it'll appear to other people that I'm doing that as well. So I don't know where you're at. But I know God's standing at the door of your heart. He, God brought me here. Use Calvary. Use Daniel. Use the, the, the left hand uh, thief ministry, right? And you're here by divine appointment. This is not by accident. You didn't just decide to come to get a signature, to do a contest. God brought you here. And it's for this moment. If you've never given your life to Jesus, if you've never opened up your heart, if you never said, you know what, I surrender. I did it, 16 and I've never been the same. Maybe you've done it, but you know what, nothing happened. Well, you know what, today, I believe something will happen. The Bible says, you know, by the word of their testimony, they didn't love their life up to death. That's me. And it's the blood of the Lamb that was shed for us on Good Friday why we have the forgiveness of sins and when he resurrected up in power he's now given us power to live a life strong in faith radical like i tell you i don't want to be a poser skateboarder right who wants to be a poser skateboarder that's where you don't raise your hand it's just like me and my faith i don't want to be a poser christian that's just who i am I want to be radical. Jay Adams was radical about skateboarding. He was radical about his faith. I want to be just like that. I'm not ashamed of it. I guess you guys can kind of tell that. It, it's kind of known. But you know what? You guys are seeing me live right now. This is a little different. 
And I'm thankful to be here, thankful that God has used my story to bring you guys here. My skateboarding history, my legacy, things that I've done. I am so grateful for all those things. But I want to pray with you guys. So I want everyone to bow your heads and close your eyes right now. This is like, not just between me, this is between you and God. This is something that you're going to do. And God, it says that we're two or more gathered. He's right here in the midst. So if that's you and God's knocking on your heart and you want to allow God in, I just want you, when I count to three, raise your hand up. And we're going to pray together. On the count of three. One, two, three. Raise your hand where you're at. Just raise your hand. I see your hands. I see your hands. Raise your hands. Just raise them up high. There's nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. Raise your hands up high. Raise your hands up high. Raise your hands up high. Raise your hands. I see hands everywhere. There's hands everywhere. God is... And you know what? Every hand that's raised, that's a heart that's open. Okay? It's not like you're just saying, oh, I'm in. No, this is you opening up your heart. And when I say this prayer, you're going to allow God to come in. And He's going to wash you. You can put your hands down. I want you to say this prayer with me. Everyone repeat this prayer. Everyone here, say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me. God raised you from the grave and you're alive today. Come into my heart. I repent of all my sins. Help me to forgive others. Help me to forgive myself. I receive your forgiveness. Today I'm going to heaven. Today I'm saved. Today I'm a Christian. Now fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. out when it says one sinner comes to repentance get this if you go to church you've heard this before if you don't go to church let me tell you something and you you've raised your hand you it says that when one sinner comes to repentance all the angels in the presence of god are rejoicing all the angels in heaven there's such a a, a celebration right now for one of you think about this you think the Super Bowl's round and there's a, oh, but the one, two, three, wow. We're talking heaven is rejoicing over one. And there was, I don't know how, there's got to be at least 75, 80, I don't know. If somebody counted it? I don't know. But you know what God knows? And I want to pray over you guys now. You know what? That is what my life is here for, is to do that, is to share my story, share God's love, and have people open up their hearts to receive Jesus in their lives. This is, parents, this is the most, this is the way you can be re examples to your children, is by walking in faith, being a part of what God's doing on this earth. I'm challenging you parents. And you kids, if your parents are out getting crazy, you need to be the example to your parents. Because your parents need an example. And you, I got to lead my parents to the Lord. Amen? I'm going to see them in heaven one day. My mom, my dad's still with me. But I'm telling you, today is a great day. Let me pray for you. Lord, I lift up everyone here. God, I thank you for them. I pray over them. I that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus. All these kids here, all of them, all of them, all of them, all of them, God. I thank you, God, that the plans that you have for them are good, not evil. You have a future and a hope for them, God. And I thank you, God, that you, there's, there's pain in their hearts, God. I want you to heal them right now. I want them to walk out of this skate park changed, like where, where there was pain, where there was guilt, where there was unforgiveness, God, I pray that you heal that very place, that they walk out of here like free, victorious over it, God. And so I thank you for it, God. I lift it up to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on. Here, here's your instructions. Hey, I, I like to talk a lot, right? I said five, ten minutes, right? 
Here's your three things you need to do. You need to read your Bible, listen to God, because that's where he speaks to you. You need to talk to God. You need to pray. And then you need to get connected to a good, healthy church. Calvary Arrowhead. You've got good, strong churches in this area. They meet here every Monday night. Come here, hang out, ask your hardest questions, challenge these guys. They'll go study and try and find answers for you because that's what you know, we do as ministers. We ask God to give us you know, something that will help you understand who God is. Maybe you've been through some stuff. But those are the three things. Did you guys hear me? Read your Bible. Talk to God. Pray. Get connected to a good church. Come on, give us. Give everybody who volunteered. All these guys, Daniel. Calvary Chapel for putting all this on. Man, God bless you guys.